Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another session with Mr. Abdul Wahab. This is Hermes Susprep, and today we're working on the writing and language uh, exam of the English SAT, the new SAT, of course. And we're gonna go through the first passage of the writing and language test. Um, on this uh, part of the exam, you have only 35 minutes to answer 44 questions. So we're gonna get straight to the point. Um, the way you deal with this passage is by reading and taking a look at the underlined parts. Wherever you have an underlined part, that means there's something that you need to change or that you need to keep. So they're, they're gonna ask you about this, whether there is something that you should fix or whether it should whether it should stay exactly the same as it is. So we're gonna go through the first uh, passage today and we're gonna show that the concepts that you're being tested on for this part of the exam are not actually as hard uh, as some people might make them out to be. So again, this is practice test uh, number one, which you could go on the College Board website and download uh, for free. It's one of the sample exams that they have up on their website. And again, we're going to go through the first passage. So let's begin. Uh, way to go. So we'll take a look at the use of the word way here. Uh, Greek yogurt, a strange form of cultured yogurt, has grown enormously in popularity in the United States since it was first introduced in the country in the late 1980s. Uh, from 2011 to 2012 alone, sales of Greek yogurt in the U.S. increased by 50%. So, so far, we have no underlying parts, so there is nothing for us to fix. Uh, the resulting increase in Greek yogurt production has forced those involved in the business to address the detrimental effects that the yogurt making process may be having on the environment. So here they're talking about the process of making Greek yogurt. The fact that the consumption of Greek yogurt in the United States has increased by 50%, of course, and that uh, the process of production has actually bad or de detrimental effects uh, on the environment. So fortunately, farmers and others in the Greek yogurt business have found many methods, many ways of controlling and eliminating most environmental threats. Given these solutions, as well as the many health benefits of the food itself, the advantages of Greek yogurt outdo the potential drawbacks of its production. So, here, here's where we need to stop. Now, some people might just ask me, can't we go straight to the underlined part and answer? Uh, well, uh, here I have to tell you that with so, in some uh, questions, this might work. But in others, it might not, because they're going to ask you sometimes about the context or where you should place a certain sentence at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. And of course, you do need to read the sentence to get the um, context of the sentence itself. So again, given these solutions, as well as many health benefits of the food, the advantages of Greek yogurt outdo the potential drawbacks of its production. Uh, when you outdo someone, you kind of... Uh, do more than he does, okay? You outdo it. So I don't think here that the advantages outdo the drawbacks. They actually, they outweigh or they are more important than the drawbacks, okay? Outperform, again, I mean, we use outperform for athletes and athletics. Defeat, again, this is like in sport performances when someone out uh, does someone else. He does more than he does. But we're talking about advantages and drawbacks here. So uh, the advantages are much bigger or we have more advantages than we have drawbacks. So that's outweigh. Now take a look at this paragraph. You get one, two, three, four. Okay. And what you need to do here is which choice provides the most relevant detail to the information mentioned here. Okay, so let's take a look. The main environmental problem caused by the production of Greek yogurt is the creation of acid whey as a byproduct. So this is one of the main problems. Okay, there's creation of acid whey as a byproduct, which is basically, it is not used, it's thrown away. Because it requires up to four times more milk than conventional yogurt does, Greek yogurt produces larger amounts of acid whey which is difficult to dispose of, it's, it's difficult to get rid of. To address the problem of disposal, farmers have found a number of uses for acid whey. They can add it to livestock feed as a protein supplement, and people can make their own Greek-style yogurt at home by straining regular yogurt. Now, what we've had here is a sudden shift in focus or in information in sentence number four, okay? So here they were talking about how to address the problem of disposal of the uh, acid whey. And they mentioned one way, that is they can add it to livestock feed as a protein supplement. 
and people can make their own Greek style yogurt at home by straining regular yogurt. So th th there's a change in concept. So which choice provides the most relevant detail? We need the detail that is most relevant to what's being talked about here. Okay. So again, they can add it to livestock feed as a protein supplement and convert it into gas to use as fuel in electricity production. Uh, this looks uh, like one way, of course, of using Greek yogurt. So I'm uh, I'm liking answer B. Okay, of course it's not A because we do need change in this sentence. Okay, so uh, supplement while sweet way is more desirable as a food additive for humans. Now again, we are not uh, here. There's a shift in focus as well. The fact while way. Uh, while sweet whey is more desirable. Here again, we're taking a look at the uh, ways, okay, of disposing of the uh, acid whey, okay? So, D, supplement, uh, which provides an important element of their diet. Again, we're not talking about the diet itself. We're talking about ways of disposing of it. So, there's, of course, using it as a protein supplement for the livestock or, or and converting it into gas to use as fuel in electricity production. That's another way of disposing of it. Let's continue. If it is improperly introduced into the environment, acid whey runoff can pollute waterways, depleting the oxygen content of streams and rivers as it decomposes. Okay, so do we need any change in this sentence? Okay, so... Can we say, can pollute waterways? Now, here we have an apostrophe S. This is a possessive noun, which means we need another noun after it to have a complete meaning. We don't have another noun uh, coming after it, so there is. this is an improper use of the apostrophe S. Could have polluted, uh, or could have polluted waterways. If you say it this way, if it is improperly introduced into the environment, acid way runoff could have polluted waterways. We're not talking about something that... Uh, could have happened in the future we're talking about something that can always do this okay if it is imp improperly introduced okay this is the present passive so we need to follow it up with the present okay uh, has polluted waterways again apostrophe s waterways what we don't have a continuation of it so this is an improper use of the apostrophe s so i'm going to go with uh, option a here okay so Yogurt uh, depleting the oxygen content of streams and rivers as it decomposes. Yogurt manufacturers, food scientists, and government officials are also working together to develop additional solutions for reusing whey. So here, uh, we have a problem here in punctuation. Now, as we said uh, in my previous uh, The Grammar Course videos, when you have uh, an item uh, or items in a series, when you have a list of items, we need a comma after each item in the list, okay? So here we have yogurt manufacturers, food scientists, and government officials. So we have three items in this list. Uh, there is an, a semicolon right here, which is misused. We don't need a semicolon. We need a comma after each item in the list. So I'm going to go with the answer that gives me a comma after each item. I'm not going to keep it as it is. I don't need a colon. And I don't need a comma after and. We don't put a comma after and. Okay? So that's basically it. Now... To make this paragraph more logical, sentence 5 needs to be placed where it is now, after sentence 1, after sentence 2, or after uh, sentence 3. Here, let's try moving, okay, uh, se uh, sentence number 5 to see where it could, uh, where it could be placed in the mo uh, where's the best place to place it. Okay, so sentence number five says, if it is improbably, uh, if it's improperly introduced into the environment, acid whey runoff can pollute waterways, depleting the oxygen content of streams and rivers as it decomposes. So, I'm not going to keep it where it is, okay, because here, in the previous sentence, they can add, again, they were talking about ways of um, basically disposing of it. Okay, so, and here we have yogurt manufacturers, food scientists, and government officials are also working together to develop additional solutions for re reusing whey. This part, okay, uh, of addressing this problem begins here from three all the way to the end. This sentence, uh, sentence number five, okay, doesn't seem to go well in this part of the selection or the passage. Okay, so we need to be moving this out of this uh, whole part. 
So we, here we have after sentence one, after sentence two, after sentence three. I'm not going to put it after sentence three because again, this chunk of sentences three, four, and five, uh, three, four, and six should stay together. Okay. Now let's see if it works after sentence one. The main environmental problem caused by the production of Greek yogurt is the creation of acid whey as a byproduct. If it is improper and properly introduced into the environment, acid whey runoff can pollute waterways. Now again, uh, th there is an immediate uh, or a sudden disconnection in ideas. Okay, if you move from one to sentence number five immediately, so I need something that introduces the idea in five because it requires up to four times more milk to make than conventional yogurt does greek yogurt produces larger amounts of acid whey which is difficult to dispose of now they mentioned acid whey okay and the fact that it is difficult to dispose of and if it is improperly introduced into the environment it could pollute waterways and so on so i'm going to place it at sentence number two okay and this is our best answer right here now Though these, uh, let's continue. Though these conservation methods can be costly and time-consuming, they are well worth the effort. Okay, so the writer is considering deleting the underlined sentence. Should the writer do this? I'm going to read the whole passage uh, or the whole paragraph to be able to answer this question. Nutritionists, okay, consider Greek yogurt to be a healthy food. It is an excellent source of calcium and protein serves to be a digestive acid and it contains few calories in its unsweetened low and non-fat forms greek yogurt is slightly lower in sugar and carbohydrates than conventional yogurt is also because it is more concentrated greek yogurt contains slightly more protein per serving thereby helping people stay so in this paragraph I, I see lots of advantages or good stuff about Greek yogurt. Okay, they mentioned a lot of the co uh, a lot of the pros of Greek yogurt. It is a healthy food, an excellent source of calcium and protein. It uh, serves as a digestive aid. It contains few calories, not a lot of calories, and it's unsweetened, low and unfat form. It is slightly lower in sugar and carbohydrates than conventional yogurt, which is a good thing. Also, because it is more concentrated, they contain slightly more protein per serving, okay? So, uh, thereby helping people stay, basically stay uh, satisfied for longer periods of time. So, this sentence, however, says, though these conservation methods can be costly and time-consuming, they are well worth the effort, okay? These uh, conservation of Greek way, of course. So here they're asking us, the writer is considering deleting the underlying sentence. Should the writer do this? Now, the first thing that you should get out of this uh, question is that, uh, no, he should not be deleting it. So I'm immediately canceling the first two options, okay? Because again, they're saying that they are well worth the effort. They should work on conserving Greek yogurt, okay? So I'm going with no, but I have to know why I want to keep it in its place, okay? So it continues the explanation because it continues the explanation of how acid whey can be disposed of safely. No, it doesn't tell us how acid whey can be disposed of safely. It sets up the argument in the paragraph for the benefits of Greek yogurt. Yep, that's the answer. Now, for seven, okay, let's take a look at question, uh, question number seven, okay? So, uh, it is an excellent source of calcium and protein, serves to be a digestive aid. Uh, Usually in English, we don't say it serves to be, but we say it serves as a digestive aid. Okay, it serves as a digestive aid. Now, eight, and it contains, and it contains few calories. Okay, so let's take a look at the previous verbs. Here we have it is, this is the simple present. Okay, then we have um, it serves. Okay, serves. Here we have serves. So they didn't repeat the subject. Okay, the subject was mentioned here, which is it. It is an excellent source of calcium and protein, serves uh, as a digestive aid, and contains. We don't need it again in this sentence because it was mentioned at the beginning and it wasn't repeated in the second part or in the second item in the list. So I'm going with contains alone. Now, nine, okay? Nine. So here again, they were mentioning the benefits of it, okay? Also, because it is more concentrated, 
Greek yogurt contains slightly more protein per serving, okay? Let's take a look if we have a better word than also, okay? We have in other words, we have therefore, and we have for instance. Now, in other words, we use in other words to introduce an explanation, okay? Or to try and clarify or elucidate a piece of information. However, here, we are adding information. We are adding the idea that because it is more concentrated, Greek yogurt contains slightly more protein, ser uh, protein per serving, thereby helping people stay uh, satisfied. The, uh, since we are adding a piece of information right here, also seems to be a good word or better than the ones introduced here. So we use in other words and for instance to introduce uh, examples or uh, explanations. We're not introducing an explanation. We use therefore okay, to introduce a conclusion. We are not making a conclusion. So also seems to be the best answer here. So it helps them stay satisfied for longer periods of time okay or sorry it's satiated. It helps them remain satiated for longer periods of time. Now, when someone is satiate, uh, satiated, he has eaten something and he feels um, he feels full. He doesn't feel hungry. Um, he has enjoyed his meal. He doesn't feel like he needs any more food. So, satiated seems like a, a very good word to use in this particular sentence. Now, let's see if there are other better words fulfilled um ful when a person wouldn't feel ful fulfilled by eating <laughs> i mean you might feel fulfilled if you've achieved something okay complacent means uh, like y y you're happy okay you're happy for longer periods of time i'm not sure if um complacent uh if you eat if you eat Greek yogurt, this is gonna make you more complacent or more uh, easy to talk to or better to deal with. Uh, sufficient, it would make you more enough, uh, more sufficient. Uh, this doesn't look like the right word to use, so I'm going with a again, which is no change. Okay, so these health benefits have prompted uh, Greek yogurt's recent surge in popularity. In fact, Greek yogurt can be found in an increasing number of products such as snack food and frozen des uh, desserts. Because consumers uh, reap the nutritional benefits of Greek yogurt and support those who make and sell it, therefore, farmers and businesses should continue finding safe and effective methods of producing, of producing the food. So here, the problem here we have is with uh, therefore, according to the question, uh, should it stay, should it be removed, or uh, should we use so? Or should we use farmers? Now, one thing that you should know is therefore is similar to so in meaning, okay? We use it to introduce uh, an effect, okay? We use it, uh, we use it to, use an, uh, to introduce an effect. So if you delete therefore and use so, you haven't done anything. And this is actually a giveaway. Um, this is a giveaway to the fact that we do need to change it and here's why okay because consumers okay because consumers reap the nutritional benefits of greek yogurt and support those who make and sell it there's no need to say therefore once you use because at the clause that follows the dependent clause beginning with because uh, doesn't need to begin with therefore okay so we can delete therefore and have a complete idea it would be wordy if you would use therefore. So you could say, because consumers reap the nutritional benefits, farmers and businesses should continue finding safe and effective methods of producing the food. Now, uh, using a semicolon after a dependent clause is unwarranted. There's no need for it. It doesn't play any effective role here. So I'm going with the answer B. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for some more videos on the writing and language part of the SAT. And uh, please make sure you leave your comments down in the comments section. We would love to hear from you. Tell us what you think of these videos. And make sure you share them with your friends. We're trying to help as many people as possible. So stay tuned for some more videos on the new SAT. See you soon.